a lot of us might be sitting at home going crazy because we don't have a yoga studio to go to. And there's a lot of online options. But this is for people who have never taken a class with me or they um, may have never tried yoga or they may, ever, may never have taken this type of yoga. So this is a yin yoga practice. And it's very restorative, but it's not a restorative type of class. Um, it holds poses for five minutes, and poses, I mean shape. And this is, part of me, is we're getting the dog screaming again, because there's a do another dog coming around. So obviously I need this practice as well. Um, so anytime you're feeling stress or a lot of anxiety, you want to err away from the yin, the harder practices, um, because sometimes they might agitate you even further. Um, sometimes the more restorative and yin practices, the one that calms the mind, might actually be beneficial to, to you. This is also good for athletes. If you had a really hard workout or a, or a race uh, previously, um, I would suggest do an easy spin or an easy um, uh, run or swim to get all kind of the gook out of your um, muscles and joints um, and then come to a yin practice. Um, it will chill you out, so it's not something you want to do to energize you in the morning. Um, so again, you want to start, we're going to do poses for five minutes, and it is a matter of you starting at about 50% of what you would feel in a stretch. So it's beyond what a stretch might be, and well, it's, it's not as much as what a stretch might be, because um, if you start off with that 100% stretch and feel that strain, then you're not getting into the tissues, you're actually kind of overstraining the muscles. So it's enough to allow the muscles just to say, oh wait, she's going to hang out here for a while, and then the tissues begin to melt. Okay, so let's start off with some back bends first. And again, these aren't your back bends that you might see in Cirque du Soleil. This is going to be like a Sphinx pose. <clears throat> and so you'll kind of, it looks like a Cobra pose. And we'll, I'm going to start off my clock. And it's, you want to have your elbows bent first. And of course, your legs are relaxed behind you. If you would like to put a block or a bolster underneath your elbows, that might work. And you want to just relax the belly onto the mat. And what happens here is there's a little bit of compression in the lower spine particularly. And if there's too much, you'll want to bring your elbows a little bit more forward and get a little bit more of your abdomen onto the mat. But if this is okay with you, you can bring your elbows up a little higher. And you want to think about the chest kind of pulling forward. So chest is kind of pulling forward. And then you'll breathe deep. Go in through the lungs, deep into the belly. start feeling a little bit of tension in your shoulders. Let them drop a little bit. And feel free to close your eyes. I typically don't have music when I practice yoga at home because 
sometimes I go with what I'm feeling at the moment. And if I have a set playlist, it, it doesn't account for that. I can't fail it. Um, I want something upbeat. Um, and lots of times what we'll do is we will use music in a yoga class or a workout and it'll pull us away from being mindful of what we're feeling. It's a matter of being patient with what you're feeling. And with yin, the muscles want to respond right away. It's a matter of just relaxing and letting the tissues dissolve. But also in knowing that a pose is held for five minutes, the mind sometimes gets a little freaked and says, oh crap, i got to be here for five minutes. And so the first few minutes might sound just, oh my gosh, this is going to drive me crazy. But then once the mind stops, you think, hey, I can handle this. So a yin practice is more like a long distance walk rather than a 5K. You think about it in those terms, and I'm not going to force myself into anything. I'm just going to allow myself to breathe into all the different parts of my body that are experiencing something and then just locating that part and just saying, huh, maybe I should let that go. So a few more moments here. We're going to go into a sort of a lunge position. So then press into the hands. And you draw them closer to your belly and then just kind of wiggle your hips a little bit. And we're going to start with our left foot. Okay. So draw the left foot forward. Oh. And you can open your knee up as much as possible and then the blade of the foot is going to kind of lift off the floor and that's fine. Or you can do a more solid. This is dragon. So the knee can just be in line with the foot and facing forward. And it really depends upon what you're, you are looking for. Sometimes with the leg, the knee in line with the, the toes, you might get a little bit more of a, um, of a stretch in the right thigh. Whereas with the knee is open, you'll get a little bit more of a groin stretch. You decide what feels good for you. I'm going to aim for the groin stretch. So we'll start here. And again, if you want to pull some bolsters or blocks, so sometimes blocks might make it easier for you to your elbows down. And so, oh, here comes another dog. Hey. 
card. And so this is how we dissolve tension. Because what happens is when we have tension in our lives, tension in the body, um, we might try to deal with it mentally, but it still stays in our bodies physically. And so if we don't do anything about it, it will continue to compress. It remembers. So it's important for us to recognize where our bodies hold tension and address those when it's necessary. You can say, oh, I'm starting to feel tension in my thigh. And I know that's where I hold tension. I'm going to need to address that. And so sometimes as the body melts into a posture, you might find yourself going a little deeper. And that's good. That's fine. If not, then that's fine too. And continue your breathing. Any time that your breathing becomes labored, whether it's in a yoga practice or whether it's in life, it means that you're straining. And the breath is a good cue for the stressors in your life. Just about a minute left. And so this is working on the hips. And a lot of people that I've taught in the past are always talking about how tense they are in the hips. And that's our storage depot of our tension. It holds a lot of memories. So this will address those, not the memories, but the tension. And so let's very easily kind of wiggle out of this posture and then straighten the left leg just a little bit, and just get a little movement back in. And now let's work on the other leg. So right leg forward. As I get older, I feel more need to go. Ugh. So this might feel a little different on this side. So whether you want to have the knee straight, that's up to you. And this might feel good for you on this side. Or perhaps you want to do both. This is called sloppy yoga. And no yoga is really sloppy, but sometimes I see people who like to lounge kind of this way. And it's a little bit of a different posture, but if you lean a little bit more this way, you might find a little bit of IT band stretch. my IT band on this side is always tight because I had a knee injury that stems from high school. And so whether you do this now or you do this later, you could consider that version of the posture. But I'm going to roll back to where I was before.
So a lot of yoga practices, a lot of people don't want to do it because it's too slow. And this is certainly one of them. But sometimes slow is good. So we know that the turtle and the hare, the turtle was the one who actually won the race. Because the the hare was so busy messing around with other things that he forgot what he was doing in the first place. So how many times do we race around without remembering What am I here for? What was I doing? So slow is sometimes the way to go. I used to have a shirt that I got in Annapolis. On one side it said, live slow. The other side said, sail fast. And everyone would see the front of it and they'd say, life slow. I'm like, no, live slow. And they just didn't get it. And I like the idea of living slow. Not taking, not wasting our time with things that don't serve us. And that's sometimes what we do. We do things for approval. We do things because we want to belong rather than doing what's best for us. easily walk ourselves out of this and just wiggle yourself back and forth. Straighten the right leg. So you're halfway through. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit more forward bend. So again, we're going to start with the left leg. So left leg stretches out. <clears throat> the right leg is kind of bent, however, is good for you. And so if you want to sit on a bolster or if you want to sit on a blanket to kind of hike up your hips a little bit, it could only, you might only need about an inch. And that way the pelvis rolls forward. That's ultimately what you want to get towards. And here's where if you want to use some blocks, you can use them. And you want to bend a little bit towards the right foot. So it's rather than forehead to knee, which is a different yoga practice, you want to think about the extension. So think about the nose to the foot. Again, start at about 50%. And as an athlete, for me, I hold a lot of tension in my hamstrings. It's part of the reason why I had back surgery about five years ago, six years ago. happens is the hamstring just holds a lot of tension. And so we do a, do a ton of straining in our lives, especially as athletes. 
but we don't take time to stretch because that's just sissy stuff. I know Muhammad Ali used to stretch 45 minutes a day. And again, stretching is a little different than this. Because stretching does handle the muscles. But the fascia is sort of like a saran wrap around the muscles. That that's on the outside and that holds on to a lot of the toxins and a lot of the tension as well. And so we might give our muscles a 20 minutes, a 20 second stretch. And then our fascia is saying, hey, yeah, how about me? Also feel a little bit of stretch in your back. Again, this shouldn't be any sort of jarring or electric pain. If so, just sit up a little bit. This is just that gradual sinking, that dissolving. bad and I sometimes have to place my hand underneath my calf so I don't extend my knee too straight or hyperextend it. And sometimes I'll turn my foot just so I'm getting a little bit more of an IT band stretch. And then slowly walk yourself out. And then do a little bit of a wiggle. Move me back in because you've been seated there for a while. And now right leg extends. And left leg is bent however it feels comfortable. So the right leg is, although it's straight, it's just kind of relaxed. And then if the right knee is, I mean the left knee is, is jutting up too high, you could put a lock under it. So you want to be comfortable, but not let too much of the props do the work. So restorative pose is allowing everything to drop, whereas yin is, is there's a little bit of work there. So a lot of people who are in this fast mindset, you have to do everything. You have to go, go, go. And they have a problem with yin yoga because it isn't a workout. And this is a perfect complementary practice to a hard workout. But it's just as important as any sort of cardio or strength building practice. Because it allows you to tune in to the places of your body where you've worked too much. Sometimes if we're working too fast, we need 
don't teach ourselves patience. In our distracted society, we focus too much on filling the void. But the void is sometimes a portal of understanding ourselves. And so sometimes those times where we reach for our phones and we reach for that means of distracting ourselves from that void, that inner space, Sometimes there are times of wasting. There are times where we can educate ourselves on what is going on deep. And Ian is great about that endurance run, that idea that it is about pacing yourselves. Anybody who's run a marathon knows that if you start the first mile too fast, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> I've even started triathlon. burn out the first minute. You say, okay, what is doable for this first minute? Closer to you, walk your hands up. And bring the knee in. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth. And then you'll wiggle your knees back and forth when she'll wipe her them. And then you'll want to settle back into Shavasana. And what I like for Shavasana is a pillow for underneath my calves. So I'm going to set you up first. And then I'm going to talk because my DSLR is going to run out in a second. So I'll take a bolster. I'll put a bolster underneath my lower back. So pillows underneath the calves. Bolster. And then you recline back. So I'll let you get into position. So it's important for us to find moments to live slow. so much time doing and spend such little time really recognizing the gifts that we have in our lives. There is a motto, I guess, 
a mantra that says, oh, you should do everything because life is short. But actually, life is long. And I've spoken about this before. But if you ask yourself, you truly ask yourself, what am I doing that is best for not only me, but for the world? And what am I doing that is just for superficial reasons? What am I doing to seek approval of others? Or to achieve a sense of belonging. Because if you look deep within that void, you recognize that you do belong, that we are all connected. And Seneca responds to this idea of life is short. He says, it is not that we have a short time to live, but we waste a lot of it. Life is long enough, and a sufficiently generous amount has been given to us for the highest achievements if it were all well best invested. But when it is wasted in heedless luxury and spent on no good activity, we are forced at last by death's final constraint to realize but it has passed away before we knew it was passing. We are not given a short life, but we make it short. And we are not ill supplies, still ill supplied, but wasteful of it. Life is long if you know how to use it. So if you consider moments of self-care, such as a yoga practice, times of rest, times where you say, no, I'm going to stop. Enjoy this moment. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to savor the moments that I have. Each moment is sacred. So, as we start to introduce some movement back into your body, start to wiggle your extremities, and wiggle your pinky toe. Touch your thumb to your index finger, to your middle finger, to your ring finger, your pinky finger. Just kind of 
wiggle your ankles now. And extend your arms over your head, your legs long, best as possible. And to roll onto one side, you decide which side is preferable. When you're ready, push the top hand into the mat, into the floor. Press yourself into an easy seated posture. Your eyes can remain closed. And then take, take a deep breath and exhale appropriate and check in how are you now was this time wasted Certainly my dogs are a little bit more chilled out. And place your palms together. All fingers align, your thumbs to your heart, and bow down. And the light in me honors the light in all of you. Namaste. Thank you.